Nora. Hello, hello. Nora, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, and clearly. Oh, wonderful. Excellent. Great. So the eruption has started and uh, it's very close to the uh, eruption site of the 22 eruption, a little further to the northeast, I understand. And uh, yeah, what's going on, Tor? Would you like to say a few words? Yeah, the uh, the eruption site is uh, uh, just uh, north of, or well, sort of on the northeastern side and north side of a mountain called Little Hutur. That's and, a wonderful name. <laughs> yes. So this is the Little Hutur eruption of the Faradal Shat fires. Okay, wonderful. Let's just uh, come up here. You can see this. This is the name Little. Let's say again, Hutur, I need yeah. to practice this. And, and, and that's actually the hill in the foreground, the, the rocky slope in the foreground. The it's one that you're looking at in the background there, that's Kalir. That's Kalir. Yes, I got that. But this is Little. Hutur. 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 Okay, Hutur. I need to practice. Uh, it, just mean, I, it, it just means the small ram. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> so I got the litli, but you know. Yeah. So okay. So anyway, no, so, there, go ahead. Yeah. So the eruption opened up, but where we expected it to open up, uh, we had been predicting that it would start at Little Rutur, and uh, one of the reasons for that is that uh, from about Saturday. Uh, early Saturday and then uh, up until the eruption, there was accumulation of, of magma into a small pocket that turned out to be a seismic and right underneath Little Hutter. And uh, as you pump magma in there and it, and it is not moving upwards, you increase the uh, uh, internal pressure of within the magma. And uh, when that pressure overcomes the strength of the uh, the lid, so to speak, or the or the or the roof, mm -hmm. and uh, it breaks breaks it, and uh, you have an eruption, and that's exactly what happened. Yes, fantastic, and it uh, started off with quite a long fissure. I have some footage here from the uh, the start of it. Wait a second. Oh. One second. Sorry, it's YouTube. So, and, uh, oh no, that's another live cam now. But uh, it started off as a fissure there, and now it was kind of pretty long, uh, some some seven to 900 meters, I read. And now it seems a little shorter, the fissure that's erupting, is that right? It's not a single fissure. It actually is a set of an echelon uh, fissures. And uh, uh, maybe I can show you. Sure, go ahead. Um, yes, it, it seemed like a small set of fissures, but uh, did it start off uh, as, as several fissures or as one yes. big fissure? So, if I share. Yeah, go ahead. So, this is a map showing the, the lava flow the outlines of the lava flow field from about 9.30 last night. Okay. And the black lines in here are all the fissure segments that were erupting. Right. <clears throat> and the total length of, 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 of this sort of a vent system is one kilometer, but all of these fissures are much, much shorter. This one is about 200 meters long. And so, it, it, you know, it's, it's a... a set of national fishes, which is quite interesting to to see. Uh, by this time, the uh, volume of the lava was about 730,000 uh, cubic meters. Okay. And if you take that duration, that gives you about um, a dense rock equivalent magma discharge rate of about 40 cubic meters per second, which is about 10 times higher than was in the beginning of the 21 eruption, and about two times higher than what was the beginning of the 22 eruption. 
So clearly this eruption was uh, more intense at the very beginning. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Yes. And and uh, the, than both the 21 and the 22. Uh, but it's definitely much, much smaller than the, the other two, at least for the moment. And uh, the magma days charts has dropped significantly uh, in the in the last sort of 12 hours. Activity seems to be focused on, on this segment here. And it probably days charts is probably less than 10 cubic meters per second, which is getting back to sort of similar effusion as we saw in the 21 eruption. Okay, and yeah. also also later on in the twenty two eruption, and uh, the main stream of lava is, is along this lava river here to uh, a dispersed flow flood, which is filling in this uh, little low lying area in here, and and it needs to fill that in to continue further south. Yes, that's exactly that. It needs to fill that in in order to actually yeah. make it further, indeed. So, and the faster it fills it in, the 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 more speedily it will progress further south. But I mean, let's see. I mean, with these eruption rates or these emission rates, it should take a little while for this valley to be full. Yeah, and probably the reason why we had this uh, both kind of a rather long vent system open up in the beginning of this eruption and 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 relatively high magma discharge, sort of this forty cubic meters per second, is uh, the fact that. Uh, uh, since Saturday, we've seen this on a seismic zone right underneath the this area in Little Hood, right underneath here. And uh, uh, Thomas Fisher at, at Charles University in, in Czech Republic interpreted that to mean that magma was accumulating yes. underneath this area. And since it couldn't make it up to the surface, if you're pumping into a volume, and you increase the amount of material, and then, then you increase the internal pressure, and you you start to put force on the on the roof, and you can even generate inflation, which is exactly what we saw. Yes. And when the you know you build up this internal pressure, and when finally the roof ruptures, as they did here, then the magma will because it's overpressurized will shoot out fairly rapidly, and at a fairly high discharge. Uh, but but because you're releasing the pressure and there's a pressure drop in the system, it will also, the, the how much material comes out per unit time uh, will be reduced very quickly. And that's exactly what we saw. So we're seeing that so sort of happen. And now the system is getting down to a fairly low volume, may have reached maybe some kind of equilibrium between what's coming in and what's going out. And if that is the case and, and the, the, the conduit stays open, then we can have activity there for quite some time, just boiling or oozing just out. Just low oozing level out. oozing yeah. activity, yeah. yes, exactly. So, well, I hope so, because uh, I just booked my flight ticket, so I hope it goes on for a little longer. I would hate to see it stopping before I arrive, so, but uh, great. Can I but, quickly, yeah, go ahead. Another interesting thing about this is that the magma injection that is responsible for this present day activity, uh, when you get a little bit deeper down in the crust, is using the same pathway as the 22 and the 21 magma intrusions used. So it's reoccupying the same linear uh, uh, plumbing system, if you like. Yes, it, it, it all looks connected on a broader scale, not on a, a segment or fissure scale. Of course, they are broken up, but uh, the overall stretch seems that there is a, an, a north eastward progression so and uh this is very interesting of course geologically this is fascinating because in the geological record we wouldn't even be able to distinguish that these flows erupted over different years they would actually look as one big eruption to us if we're looking at some older rocks you know from mm -hmm. several million years ago to witness this is fantastic let me just quickly go back i picked this up on um, on uh on um, Twitter here, and uh, here's a few impressions from the very start of it with the, uh, let's get the sound down, uh, with the fissure or people being very close to the fissure and then the camera being, you know, zoomed in and there you have some close up shots of the, the new lava going over fresh ground. And here you see one of the fissure segments and uh, people being awfully close for my taste, but you know, I think the uh, the gases is a is a big problem, isn't it? 
So, uh, but yeah, fascinating footage, isn't it? Absolutely. So, uh, uh, this magma coming out at 40 cubic meters per second would produce about 16,000 tons of, or release 16,000 tons of SO2 into the atmosphere. And uh, just during the five hours yesterday, uh, when the magma discharge was this high, uh, the fishes were, were releasing about just over 3,000 tons of SO2 into the atmosphere, just right above the fissure. So that's a good quantity of, of, of SO2 and, and, and not very really healthy to breathe in too much. And being that close, they were clearly, they were up at the roots of, literally rude to the people there and, and uh, uncomfortably close because if something happens, if there's a breakout from that front of lava or or even a gas plume sort of uh, just drops down, is pushed down by the wind or something like that, then they are they're not going to have a, an escape route because they're too close. Yes, exactly, because uh, most of the people would not have gas meters with them. So just imagine there is a lava breakout. Somebody tries to run away, stumbles, and then lies down in a, in a small depression with the gas, oh dear, you know? So I think uh, some people are maybe a, a, a tick too relaxed for my flavor. And uh, the other thing is that, of course, you have a lot of uh, moss and, and vegetation burning. So you also have smoke, not just fumes from the eruption. And yep. that adds to the uh, oxygen levels being very low. It's not just that there is poisonous volatiles uh, like uh, SO2 and, and uh, other things, but uh, there is also low oxygen levels because yep. of that. And, so, and it all adds up by making the place quite yeah, dangerous. Yeah, because even a gas mask doesn't help you if there's no oh. oxygen. You know, you're dying nevertheless. If, if, the if you so, don't have oxygen, then the gas mask is not Exactly. Difficult. The gas mask only filters the acid fumes. So, but uh, okay, fantastic. So, what's your prediction? Your, your gut feeling is that it will go on uh, at a low level for quite some time now. Is that what you're feeling, or have I misinterpreted that? My feeling is that since the pathway has opened up, uh, that um, uh, it might stay open for quite some time. I mean, weeks, maybe months. But you never know with these things. I mean, you can have one earthquake course, and you never know. <laughs> to close it up. And, uh, and uh, um, so, yeah. It's... Uh, um, uh, all bets are on, basically. Fair enough. I mean, my hope is that at least it'll go, go on for a week or two. I mean, last summer it was three weeks, something like this. So uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, I'm not, you know, as much into it as you, but uh, I, I would hope that it doesn't go on like the six months as we saw in 2021. Yeah, no, <clears throat> we'll see over the next 24 hours where I think this will go, but... Um, the fact that it's been sort of a reasonably stable for most of the morning and in the afternoon in terms mm -hmm. of the activity, that to me sort of suggests that it may have sort of stabilized and reached some kind of a semi-equilibrium in terms of outflow of things. And, and uh, uh, so the inflow and outflow are roughly the same. If that, and like I said, if that's the case, then it can continue for quite some time, as long as no one puts a plug in the in the hole. <laughs> and I will not do it, and neither will you, I think, Tor. <laughs> okay, wonderful. Uh, let's talk more in the next few days. Let's see how this develops, and I get packing. Thank you very much, Tor, okay. and uh, great that you're giving some information to myself yeah. and, of course, to the listeners as well. Super. See, Thank see you, you so in much. Iceland. See you. Yes, yeah, see you very soon. All the best. Thanks, Tor.